Um, good afternoon. Um, I'm so delighted to um, present to you, um, but also feel sad to present you the dark side of Hong Kong. Um, housing, sorry, uh, housing inequality and poverty in Hong Kong. And um, what it happened actually is simply because absence of social justice in Hong Kong. And in Hong Kong, such a wealthy city, nowadays, we still have 100,000 people. They're living in cage home cubicles, such inhumane conditions. Many of them, they are waiting for public housing, what you would call it social housing. But the number of people waiting of, for this is going up. And now we have around 155,000 applications waiting for public housing. Who are they? Actually, most of them, they are Hong Kong permanent residents. They are single people. They are single elderly. They are working poor. They are poor women and children. They are people with mental illness. Some of them, they are come from mainland China, but they are Hong Kong residents. So how poor condition they are facing? You can see, actually in, I think in this ballroom, they can occupy 200 occupants, share to, to kitchen and toilet together. Or some of them, they even don't have kitchen in their home. And what calls home actually is a bed. Only around, every person only have around 1.5 bed space, uh, 1.5 uh, square meter bed space. And one of my kind told me, let me see, I'm, I haven't yet died, but already live in a coffin. You can imagine. And some of them, they are the, this kind of bed space with a well, some of them with a partition, and then their double deck. Before that, is triple. Yeah. And actually, now we just newly find there's a triple deck. And you can imagine so many people living in a this kind of crowded, tiny space. There's poor con hygiene, poor ventilation, and you can f find there's many animal friends. They are rats, they are cockroaches, they are fish. So they can make you, they, they make you cannot sleep. So they, they always tired, they, they have no energy to do anything. They, they feel hopeless of their life. And it's extremely hot. We have a shareway, it's hotter than outside in this hot summer. And actually we found that, or the society also found that um, the rent is extremely high, although it's cheap in the amount, but if we can't eat in every square feet, it is almost or sometimes expensive than those luxury house in Hong Kong. And also, we found there are dangers in the building. We happens always at uh, fire accidents, there are collapse uh, buildings. Just this year, happened so many accidents, so many injuries, someone passed away, died. And besides, actually, there are many more proportion of uh, long-term disease people. We have a survey, there are nearly 30% of this kind of residents they suffer from long-term disease. Many of them, this because of uh, respiratory um, disease, something like that. So you will ask, in Hong Kong, such a rich society, why happened we have so many people live in this kind of condition? The one reason is poor. The wage in Hong Kong is poor and it's so low. Before that, we don't have a medium wage. Even this year we have, but it's far from the standard. And then people, if that depends on welfare, the welfare cannot afford them to have a decent housing, only can afford them to have a bed for their home. And we don't have any rent subsidy or rent control. And for these poor people, what they can do is to waiting for public housing. But they wait for public housing little for a long time. And there are so many hurdles, obstacles for them to apply for public housing. 
if you are singleton, if you are immigrants, you need to wait for seven or ten or more years. You need to have fulfill some special requirement. So this I don't go through to the point system of singleton or immigrants issues. And actually, what the, can the poor do is their cage home and cubicles, the, their final refuge. So we can see these figures I don't go through on. And then you will ask, actually in Hong Kong, our GDP per capita, almost uh, the top of the Asia. Why? We cannot solve the problem. We can surprise so many things. Why cannot help these people? And there's a very, very big problem, structure, structure, structure problem. In the past, especially in the past 10 years, we have a large de decrease of supply of the public housing from 50,000 to 15,000. And we also give up the long-term housing strategy. Before that, we, we will have an assessment of demand and supply model, but now, no more. And then before, we have a legislation on rent control and the legal protection for the tenancy. And now, no more. Why? Because we want to, the government, the society, want to support the high land price policy. And the land developer complain to the government said that we cannot make much money as we want. So let's go on this kind of policy and the poor suffer. Actually, some of my kind, all the pictures, the people in the pictures are all my kinds. I worked for this for seven, uh, 16 years. Some of my kind, they even cannot afford two meals a day. So hungry happened in Hong Kong because of injustice. And when we talk about housing inequality, actually housing inequality is the miniature of social inequality in Hong Kong. When we see the figure of Gini coefficients, it's a shame. According to UN, we are the number one in those disrupted countries or cities. It's going up. And you can see the widening disparity between the rich and poor. And it's too much than it should be. And we can see the cap per capita GDP is going up in the past 10 years. But the median income, no, it's similar. And I told you, the medium income in Hong Kong is around 17,000. But for those living in cubicle and cage home, it's below 8,000. And our population of living under population nine is 1.2 million. It's around 17% in Hong Kong. It's quite a big amount of people. And how our government think about this? You know, in their reply to UN, they said, why there's cage home and cubicle in Hong Kong? Because they are marketing demand. Poor people, they need them. They did not tell them why they need them. It's because the government did not have enough supply of public housing. Even the, in recent policy address, our chief executive, make it clear said that, not necessary to ban this kind of living condition. And also, there are many economists always say that this is a necessary evil of capitalism because of income disparity is natural in all the capitalism society. But is it should be so extreme like Hong Kong? And why it happened in Hong Kong? Because we have absence of democratic system. Our chief executive is not by, is elected by universal suffrage, only by 800 members. Many people like me or other people, they don't have right to vote. And 
even for example, how they in favor of the privilege. When he run the election and then after successfully, and he need to repay the support of the privilege. So he cut the profit test. So I think we can do much. If we can have a more democratic system, will we have more heart for our society? In housing policy, we can do more supply of public housing. We can increase the rent, land supply. We can have legislation on rent control. We can abolish all discrimination policy. We can have an anti-poverty policy. So many we can do. Just depends whether we want to do. Not because we don't have resources. Thank you.